You are listening to For More Radio, your power station with powerful teachings from the Word of God. In my life, I shall see what the Lord has in store for me. And I declare, I decree, my result is victory. In my life, I shall see what the Lord has in store for me. And I declare, and I decree, my result is victory. And walls are falling, walls are falling Walls are falling They can't keep they you can't keep you out Breakthrough is here Because breakthrough is here right now Whoa. Breakthrough is here Because breakthrough is here right now
morning, good morning, and thank you guys for tuning in to The Good Life with Dr. Lori. I am here with you this morning with my very special uh, friend and sometime co-host, Overseer Jay Evans. Thank you for coming on. Great, great, great. So, ooh, we're going to be talking about something this morning that <laughs> for some people it may be a little bit um, touchy, you know, because <laughs> as Americans or Westerners, um, sometimes we do things that we don't realize that we are doing. And when we find out, ooh, that's what we are, we're doing, you know, the thing to do is just change it. Okay, so, all right. So, for those of you that might see my post on uh, Facebook, if you do see it, the word is love, not live. I will correct that later because I don't want you guys to be sending out a post that, um, to be sending out a post that's not correct like that. But uh, I will correct it when we get done so that uh, our Listeners will be able to listen on demand. So, uh, again, welcome all of you guys to those of you that are listening live on 365. Thank you for uh, tuning in. And for those of you that are listening on Spreaker, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in and all of those good things. So today we're going to be talking about love. This particular message actually goes back to Mother's Day. Uh, Overseer and I, we, we were talking about honoring and, you know, honoring <laughs> as much as we would like for honoring to be just what we say, because it don't cost you nothing to just say, I love you. It don't, it doesn't cost exactly. you anything. Mm -hmm. So, but you know what? Here's the thing. That is not love. That's not biblical love. You will not find those three words. Uh, you will not find a commandment to say those three words. Tell your mom, I love you. Tell your dad, I love you. Tell your wife, I love you. Tell your children, I love you. That's something that there's nothing wrong with doing that. But that's not the commandment. The commandment, which talks about love in the Bible, is the equivalent to Jesus saying, you love your folks the way I loved you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And unfortunately, you know, when it comes down to um, Americans, we substitute saying, I love you for doing love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not saying everybody, so don't hold your horses. Don't get your, you know, your underwear all bunched up. I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking about a lot of people have substituted um, saying I love you for actually loving people. Because loving costs you time, money, and attention. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Loving costs you cost you time, money, and attention. And like, and like when Jesus said, if you love me, he didn't say say it, but keep mine. That. All right. So, overseer, you already took us to the first scripture. Let me read this one. We got a lot of scriptures today, but let me read this one. We're going to start with... Uh, well, let me go back. Let me go back before we jump into the scriptures, because once I get into the scriptures, I want to keep going. So, I, I said this started with Mother's mm -hmm. Day, and, um, and you know, we were talking about honoring your mother, honor your father. Well, we were actually talking about honor your mother, and honoring your mother was taking care of her, providing for her if you need That's to, right, yeah. but you show her love by what you do for her. And here's the thing, here's the thing, you can tell me you love me every day. But don't take care of me. Don't provide for me. Don't do anything good for me. Nothing. Ooh. But you just say, hey, you know I love you. Girl, come on, girl, you know I love you. You, you. 
Oh my God. You, what, what's wrong? You know I love you. But your actions are contrary to that. Your action mm -hmm. says you don't think about me. Your action says you don't. Wow, that's you know, amazing. you're not really conscious of my being. You just, when you see me and I say something, then you respond with, ah, you know, you, you know, I love you. Even in that, mm -hmm. the, that sigh, ah, you know, I love you. Even in that, it is communicating. I don't really love you. I tolerate you. I put up with you. I'm married to you. Are you my kid or I'm your parent? You know, that's all. Love is so much deeper than that. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Ooh, that's so heavy. That's so I'm, 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 and I'm going to reveal some hmm. quite a few things. Quite a few things. Now, God has put some people in my life that demonstrate love to me all the time. Because I spend a lot of time <laughs> in myself. One thing I do not do. I do not go around telling people, I love you. I love you. I love you. I hear it all the time. I do not respond. There's a reason why. And I know some of you may not even agree with this. But there's a reason why um, I don't do that. I, I do it with overseer. I do it with people that are in the inner circle. Because I have constant opportunities to back that up. Absolutely, right. Yeah. So I don't go around saying uh, I love you to just people in general mm. because I know, I know just saying that is meaningless. No meaning. If, if you can't say in your life, oh, I know she loves me. I know Dr. Lori. I know Lori. I know Annette. I know my wife. I know my mom. I know they love me. When you say that, you're not talking about me telling you that I love you. You're talking about what I do. My actions, yeah. You're talking about my actions. That's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So can I use you, Overseer? Now, I'm going to tell you guys straight up. I am not saying Overseer J. Evans is a perfect man. Mm -hmm. I am not saying that by any means. But what I am saying is... This man, he, it's not, he don't go around saying, Lori, I love you. Lori, I love you. Lori, I love you. He doesn't do that. But let me tell you what he do do. He does something every single day to say, I'm thinking about you. I got you on my mind. I care about your life. Um, I want to help you with what you got coming up. I want to support you in this business. He'll tell you quick, yeah, we have a business, but that business is Lori business, but I support her 100%. He talks about supporting me after life is over for him. Now, he talks about it just like that. He talks about when life is over, he want to make sure I'm still supported when he's dead and gone. These are like the kind of things that he talk about. He will do little things every day. I went into the refrigerator. And I know some of you guys are going to be like, what the heck? What is that? I went into the refrigerator the other day. And I saw these, um, these zero-calorie drinks that I like. Um, but the one that I really, really like, we couldn't find it. But I go into the refrigerator, and lo and behold... There's this new one with a twist to it. And, and it's several of them sitting in the refrigerator. And I looked and I thought, when did he get these? When did he put these in here? But as I got one to taste it, all of a sudden I welled up on the inside with tears because I stopped and I said, Lord, I said, God, he was thinking about me. He does this all the time. He was thinking about me. He just got them, put them in the refrigerator, put them where I could see them because I like them. I enjoy them. And I just, I just welled up with tears and, and, and began to talk to the Lord to say, God, you know, this man was thinking about me. That was communicating love. But he don't just he didn't just do it that one time. He does something like that every single day that he's showing me 
I'm thinking about you. I got you on my mind. I care about what you're going through. I care about what you, what's facing you. I had got an email and the email was quite overwhelming. And, um, uh, I had to hurry up and get a lot of things done. Immediately, he kicked in. He kicked in and started um, helping me and, and going out and doing stuff, you know, to help get this thing done. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because love is not what you say. That's right. Thank it you. is what you do. If my husband told me every single day that he loved me, but he had no corresponding actions at all. If he was gone, all I would miss, all I would miss is maybe those words. But him in his entirety, maybe not. See, people live on in us that have affected us, oh, that have uh, touched our life and changed our life. If my children say, um, I don't think my mom loved me, that would contradict everything I've done for them, not what I've said to them. Mm -hmm. Because I don't tell my children every day, because I, you know, I don't talk to them every day. These folks are grown. I don't talk to them every day, but I don't tell them every single day, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Again, love is what you do. Now, I have grandchildren. I know I'm hitting a lot of points, mm -hmm. but I have grandchildren. Now, I could get away with telling my grandchildren, uh, uh, telling the grandchildren that I love you. I could just get away with that. But that's still, that's not enough for me. <laughs> it's like, I want you to know that I love you. So I'm going to teach you about Jesus. I'm going to teach you how to pray. I'm going to teach you how to, uh, 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 you know, call on God when you need him. And when you don't, I'm going to yeah. teach you how to worship him. Then I'm going to bless you. I ask my older grandson all the time, you got some money in your pocket? I got that from you. <laughs> I ask him all the time. I say, you got some money in your pocket. I know you have money in your bank. But do you have some in your pocket? Right? And he'll always kind of shrug like, I ain't got no money in my pocket, Grandma. You know? And I said, well, you need some money in your pocket. Amen. You know? But I do little things like that because I want to affect his life. I want him to know your grandma loves you. I want him to know that you we're going to be here. If you need us, yeah, you got some parents that are there for you. And they, you know, they got a lot for you and all that right there. But you never know when you may need your grandma. I need for you to know you can count on me just like you can count on your parents, mm -hmm. right? So that's how I think about stuff like that. Now, that's me trying to show love. How many people do I do that with? People that I have in my life. How many people do I think about that I need for them to know that I love them? That I need for them to know that they can count on me. That I'm going to be there for them. How many people do I do that with? Oh, my God. You ready? And, and, you, and you know, uh, thinking about that. You know that, that love is just not what you say, uh, but what you do. When when someone well, I don't tell you when someone needs you, mm -hmm. it don't matter who they are. You you're there. Mm -hmm. You remember that we was at the McDonald's. There's this person that came in and did not couldn't find the hospital over there in Phoenix City. Yes, yes. And and uh, you know if you don't care about people, you like you know that's your problem. I'm, I'm finished. But we took care of that. We led this guy over there and you know made sure he found where he was looking for. That's love in action. My that's God. compassion. Yes, yes. And and see that's that's the way the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. Now you can look at a person, you can hear people talk about individuals, and you can base an opinion, and you have an opinion that you know that person is not well liked. But when it comes to the individual yourself, what, what you're gonna do? You're gonna turn your back on them when they need you? I don't. It, it don't. It don't matter who they are, black, white, whatever. You're gonna. You know, if you got the love of Christ in you. 
You're going to be there. You're going to do something to help that person. Amen. Somewhere or another. Amen. Amen. And that story was, there was, there was some other details to that story. This was an older guy, and he had an appointment, and he had got a little frustrated because he couldn't find the place, and he was already late. And, you know, he didn't know what to do, so he at, he was asking how to get there, you know, because he just, he, 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 did, he just did not, he couldn't figure it out. And he was asking how to get there. And initially, uh, overseer started giving him directions. And then he was like, you know what? I'm just going to take you over there. Because I, I'm giving you directions. And he was the guy was trying to figure it out in his head, you know, how to get from where we were there. He was trying to figure it out in his head. And overseer said, no, I, I'm going to take you over there. And it was funny. As we were taking him over there. Um, now, this also is love. As we was taking him over there, the man was driving probably like 30 miles per hour, but he needed to be going faster than that. And so Overseer pulled over, and he went back there and talked to him and said, look, I need for you to, you know, at least do the speed limit or something. You need to speed it up. And the guy, you know, he accommodated. And, uh, you know, we got them there, and the man was so uh, appreciative. We were just praying after that that they would give him favor and see him. Now, imagine, I'm, I'm, here, here we go. Imagine if you did that for a stranger, but I ask you to do something, and you won't even do it for me. See? see? I mean, that's everybody. You can't, you can't have favoritism and partiality. That, that, that love breaks those barriers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I, I'm going to tell you something. But this is how people are. You will do stuff for people that's going to get, that you going to get something. Uh, you going to get that, oh, it looks like you're so awesome and amazing. Mm -hmm. Or they're going to uh, remember you and put you on their platform or, you know. So you will do stuff uh -hoo -hoo. for people. That you're going to get something from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yet, the people that are in your life, um, that are around you, you don't want to do anything for them. Or if you have to do something, you're doing it with an attitude. You're doing it with the sighing and the clicking of the teeth. You don't want to do nothing for your husband. Mm -hmm. But let somebody else, let the pastor of the church call on you. You know, mm -hmm. you want to hurry up and get yourself together and go do what he wants. Mm -hmm. I know I'm speaking to somebody right now. I hear it. I hear it in the spirit realm. And you, I will say this right here. Because when we sometimes think about love, we want to feel a something inside of us. We want to feel a different kind of love. We want mm -hmm. to feel love. Mm -hmm. We want to feel. But this kind of love here is not based on your feelings. It's just based on that agape love. That kind of love, not your emotional love that I got to feel a certain way. Mm, that mm. Uh, I guess feel no love or whatever you want to feel it. Yeah, well, no, that's <laughs> whatever you look kind of love you. You probably know more I, about that than I do. But you, but what you're saying is true though. What you you that's why people be going around saying I love you, sis. I love you, bro. I love you. Something. I love you because they 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 they're equating saying I love you. To loving you, but if that same brother or sister turned around and said, "I need something," or "Can you come over here and visit with me?" You know, or 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 can you bring me some food and stuff like that? Well, if that's not on your agenda, you might not want to accommodate. But yet, you saying I love you, and then you showing love. Those are two different things. Yeah. Listen, listen. I had a visit from. Uh, uh, Apostle uh, Tina Robinson and I don't see her or talk to her a lot or anything like that but I called she was on my mind I called her and she said oh my god she said you in the spirit ain't you <laughs> she said because you were on my mind she said I was literally getting ready to come to uh, Columbus and surprise you and I was like surprise because I'm not going to be in town. Thank God he moved on me to uh, call her, right? But she came down uh, three days later because she was coming this way. She came down and we sat out and talked. And this lady literally gave me a crash lesson in loving after people done done you wrong. Mm. 
after they done you wrong in your face, right? right? Not behind your back. They did it in your face. And, well, behind your back, but in your face. <laughs> and she gave me a crass lesson. Lesson. And there was a, a person I was struggling with. Every time they called me, it was always hostile. And sometimes I was being cussed out and everything. That girl told me, she said, and I don't mean any disrespect by saying that girl, but she told me, she said, when that person called you, she said, answer the phone like this. She said, hey, so-and-so, how you doing? Man, I haven't talked to you in a while. She said, answer the phone like that. Now, you also got to be prepared to help them if they need help, even though you know, but she told me when she said that's what I needed to do, it changed. Listen, <laughs> it unlocked me. It changed everything inside of me. And it made me want to, one, say that, but two, do what I need to do to be a blessing to them so that I can help this person Get out of that which they are in. Yeah. See, before now, I didn't care about that. All I care about is, what do you want? Why are you calling me? If you calling me to cuss me out, not <laughs> taking that call. You know, I would send that in an audio text. So, those are the kind of things. But, um, I tell you what, we, this is a long opening here. We need to go to the scriptures. Let me, I'm going to, you got your scriptures. I'm going to go to, um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to... Um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a good word now. It, well, it, it really is because it's where the rubber meets the road. And you know what? This kind of message here, it again, it unlocks change in our lives. That, uh, because hatred sets in with, with the absence of love. Hate comes in. And it'll cause you to hate people, dislike people, because... It replaces love. Or, mm -hmm. or love will replace that one. Oh my God. Listen, let me tell you something. As you was talking, this thought came to me. There's a, uh, there was a young lady who, when I met, you know how you meet people and you get excited about them and you see the potential for, maybe not necessarily, won't, probably won't, it don't have to be your inner circle friend, but a good association, a good friendship. And this lady would tell me all the time, I love you, sis. I love you, sis. But I never would say it back because I, I just don't do that. I, I would rather just show whatever love I have for you, I would rather show it than to be saying that. And then you catch me wrong one day and then you, you know, you're thinking, oh, and you said you love me. So it's a way of me covering myself. I know that's bad. But anyway, she would say that all the time. And so, she would invite me to stuff, and then I would go, and, you know, it would be nice and everything. I invited her to a, a preaching that I was doing. She didn't show up. She didn't call. She didn't say anything. Then I invited her to another one. Didn't show up. Didn't call. Didn't say anything. I invited her to something else. Didn't call. Didn't show up. Nothing. Mm -hmm. But you keep telling me you love me. See... If I'm not important enough for you to put me on your schedule and show up to an event, here's the thing. You can show up. You don't have to stay. You showed your face, which means that you said you were going to be there. Then Absolutely. That's, you were there, right? Or if you cannot make it, call me. Give me heads up and let me know. Since I got you on my schedule. But I'm not going to be able to make it. Right? Give me heads up. But see, three times. Invited. Three different things. Didn't show up to not one of them. So when this person says to me, I love you. Huh. That, it, 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 it means nothing. Yeah, meaningless, yeah. It's meaningless. It's meaningless. I hope you guys are getting this. Mm. It is so much deeper than you saying I love you, but there's no corresponding actions. Oh, oh my, my God. Oh my God. I, I mean, and it's embarrassing too because the person is now sitting there thinking, you don't love me. You don't love me. They're not saying it. 
But that's what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. You keep telling me that. So, you know, uh, with Mother's Day, we were I was thinking about how all of these people are running out and getting these uh, Publix and Walmart flowers and Winn-Dixie flowers and getting the prettiest and the brightest and, you know, running over to see their uh, moms or, or the mother of their child and all of that for that one day or take them out to eat or do this and do that. And some folks didn't do nothing at all. But on that one day, that's what you do. But all the rest of those days, Ooh, you don't have time to visit. You don't have time to call. You don't have time to sit down and Mellow. have a cup of coffee. You don't have time mm. to take them um, uh, to the doctor's appointment. But if you do, it's like, oh, man, Mom, I, got, I, I just have so much to do. I'm just so busy. Now, how do you think your mother is feeling? What if your mother said to you as a child, I just don't have time to raise you. I'm just too busy to raise you. Mm. What if God, this is what Apostle Tina said to me. She said, what if God said to you, you're cut off. You have no access to me anymore. Don't call me. Don't speak to me. Don't have nothing to do with me. I was like, Lord have mercy. That bring it home, doesn't it? Yeah. It bring it home. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what Jesus said. Let me tell you what Jesus said. In um, John chapter 13, and I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to start with verse 31 and just read on down. But it's only one scripture we're trying to get to. But the whole thing speaks. It says, therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, this is what Jesus said. He says, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. I think this is so appropriate to start with that. And God is glorified in him. That's the because, opinion. listen, it's through love that God is glorified in us. In, uh, who? I'm telling See, you. See, we think that it's speaking in tongues, laying hands on the sick, and they're recovering, and, 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 and doing this, and prophesying, and all of that. No. God is glorified through us, through love. And, and like you're reading that scripture there? Mm-hmm. Jesus is just our example, the Son of God, Son of Man. And what he did, he's telling us that's how you have to do. You have to be. Absolutely. He says, if you if he, I'm sorry, if God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Then he says, little children, he breaks it down, little children, yet a little while. I am with you. You shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you. This is the commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. That ye also love one another. Wait, he didn't. He didn't end. He said, "By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for one to another." Mm. Listen, there's nothing wrong with telling people that you love them, but that's not what communicates you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. What communicates? That you are a disciple is that you love the way that he loved. Well, how did he love? Mm. He gave himself. Yeah. He gave his time, his attention, his resources, everything he had. That's how he demonstrated love to us. Mm. He gave, what was the greatest resource? His life. Mm -hmm. He gave his life. See, we oftentimes are so selfish and so thoughtless when it comes down to others that we, we, we are annoyed when uh, people want too much from us. Oh, I see, I'm not talking about something overseer that I don't know. 
you know, folks was asking me, asking me, asking me for stuff. And I became so annoyed. Mm. So annoyed. Instead of being the giver or showing and operating in love, I became so annoyed. You know, we still have to be in love regardless of what people are doing. Now, that's what uh, my visitor, that's what she was saying. She was demonstrating to me how people had really just, what we would say, stabbed her in the back and, you know, just really came for her. And 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 uh, some people had uh, tricked her and abused her and all kinds of things like that. And she was sharing how she still treats them cordial, still treat them nice, still will help them if they need. And I'm sitting there with my eyes wide open thinking to myself, shoot. I just cut somebody off the other day. Access, uh, access denied. They have no way of getting to me. And she was like, mm, mm She said, what if God did you like that? Mm. Yeah. So, see, for some people, they at that place where it's like, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm loving for real. I'm not going to play with this thing. That's where I'm at. I'm at that place where, Lord... If I'm not operating in the kind of love that says I'm a disciple of yours and that I'm a follower of yours, then nothing about what I do matters. Let me read some other scriptures. Uh, uh, let, uh, hold on just a second on that because if I, if you, if you may, um, uh, you know, we are the all, all people. All all people are the offspring of God, and actually. All of us are children of God. Some is just not in a good relationship, mm -hmm. but we all children of God. Mm -hmm. And, and that, I'm a, that passage of scripture, when you read it, something jumped out at me. Okay. Because it says, like I'm going to read this a little bit. It says, "A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another." When you see, when you let, stop there, you think, "Oh, he's just talking to the disciples. He's talking to believers." But he goes on to say, "Even as I have loved you, that you love one another." Now, by this, all men, not brothers, mm -hmm. not the Christians, mm -hmm. all men, everybody in the world, people that your enemy, people that don't like you, everybody, all men will know that you have to be my disciple because what? You must love them also. You see it? Love one another. So the one another is all. Well, I knew that he was talking about the whole world would know, but uh, I'm doing King James. So it didn't have that particular part in there, but wow, is that a game changer it's, or I mean, what? It, 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 it's so, I mean, it, it, it's everybody. Everybody. Not only, we think, oh we, we, think we just love Christians, but that, if that's the case, you love those who love you. That's it. And respect those who really, but what about the one who don't? That's right. That's still, right. That's don't right. care about you. That's you still right. have to love them. And that's actually in the, when I was writing about what this going to be about, I had put in there that, you know, we are t running around saying, I love you, I love you, I love you to people, but we're only saying that to people <laughs> that love us back or that we perceive will love us. Now, why are we saying I love you. Because, see, now this is going to mess you up. Oh, yeah. If I want something from you, what's the first and most uh, powerful way to disarm you? By saying, oh, yeah. I love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, By yeah. saying, By saying it. I love you. Yeah. By saying, I love you. That disarms people. But the heart is far from it now. But the heart is far from it. <laughs> Lord. Because when, when you say, I love you, what should come behind that is, and I'm here to serve you. I'm here to help meet your need. I'm here to be a blessing to you. I'm going to tell you something about church that trips me out. Well, <laughs> let me be careful. Some ministries I've heard. I've heard ministries, ministers say that before you pay your rent, before you 
provide groceries before you do for your family, you need to do for the church first. Yeah, uh, that's something, isn't it? Whereas the church is here to help or to serve the people. The people. But you're trying to be served. That's the wrong attitude. There's yeah. a church you was telling me about that collects money every Sunday or whatever. And they collect that money on the spot for the purpose of helping. Giving that bill. Giving helping back. people. And that thing was so amazing to yeah, me. Yeah. Because that's way that the, the, the contrast between a church that's collecting money on the spot to help meet the needs of people that are there, that are in need right now, versus a church that's saying, um, you need to give whether you done paid your rent or not. You need to give whether you done bought anything. You got paid today. The first thing you need to do is give. You pay your tithes, pay your offerings off the top before you do anything else. Mm -hmm. Now, who's in the line in need if you didn't have enough money to pay your rent, right? Yeah, yeah, who's exactly. in line in need now? You are. See, those things are mind blowing to me. And, and in the scriptures that a man don't take care of his own house, so he's worth an unbeliever, right? An, an infidel. infidel. So you mm -hmm. know, I, again, you know, love, all of this yeah. stuff has to, it has to be challenged because if you don't challenge this, you're gonna think that. Well, I love people. I, I you know, I, I, I'm nice to people. I'm kind to people. I love people. But love is not what you say. It is what you do. And that's where we don't want to. That's what we don't want to do. But let's go a little bit. Um, and I want you to keep listening the way you did. I, I'm. That is my. That's a game changer. Yeah, it's that a, is a game that's changer. That's what I heard. It jumped out at me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that yeah. is a game changer because imagine you know somebody that's on the street and they're begging for food, you know, and you want to sit and talk to them about the Lord, but that's it. You don't Give want them the you know you want to stop and tell them, hey, you know Jesus can deliver you. Jesus can set you free. Jesus can change your life. And the person that's sitting there is like, uh, whether they are listening to that or not, they're sitting there thinking, "Yeah, but can you give me something to eat? Mm -hmm. You know, can you can you can you help me out? Can you do anything?" So it's almost like, no, you bring some bread, break bread with them, and as you're breaking bread and they're eating and and their belly is is calming down, now you can share with them about Jesus because they're more receptive to hearing, mm -hmm. you know. Amen. The, the love part is two things. One, that you stop. Two, that you was willing to meet the need. Three, that you was willing to share your faith. All right? You took time, attention, and resources to meet that need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, First Corinthians you know, we didn't know how this was going to come out today. <laughs> I just let you know. I was like, okay, so we're going to be talking about this love thing. But I'm going to read these scriptures, and then I want to go to the ones that you have. The um, This is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, I'm going to read this from the Living Bible, the, the Living Bible, because I just love the way it reads. It says, if I had the gift of being able to speak in other languages, Without learning them, and could speak in every language there is there is in all heaven and earth, but didn't love others, I would only be making noise. See, <laughs> we got this thing Ooh. twisted. We got the kingdom being about these kind of things, speaking in tongues, speaking in all these different languages, going to a country, speaking in their language, don't know the language. We testify about all this kind of stuff, but don't love nobody. <laughs> the, he fact, said, the first thing, the first of the fruit of the spirit is love. So you can exactly. have, you have all this other stuff going on, but that, you do, woo, that's something. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, the, that's the proof that it, it is the spirit because <laughs> yeah. speaking in tongues woo. is not necessarily woo. proof. That it bill. is the spirit. <laughs> right. He said, but <laughs> he said, you just making noise. Uh, verse two says, 
If I had the gift of prophecy and knew all about what is going to happen in the future, knew everything about everything, but didn't love others, what good would it do? What? Man. Wait a minute. You telling me that if I can tell you what's going to happen, or I can tell you thus said the Lord, or I can tell you what God said about what's going on in your life, and but I don't love you, I'm just... Telling you, That's he big. said, what good would it do? See, what? See, what? See, do. That's a doing. Yes. What good would it do? So he said, even though you're a prophet and prophesying, if you don't love people at the core of what you're doing, if you do not love people, what it doesn't matter what you do. It See, it doesn't matter to God what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? He said, even if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to a mountain and make it move, I would still be worth nothing at all without love. How deep is that? Let me tell you why that's so deep. It's so deep because in John, 1 John it says that God is love. So you're only manifesting God to the full, fullest when you manifest love. When you manifest <laughs> who he is. The next verse, which is 3, says, If I gave everything I have to the poor people, and if I were burned alive for preaching the gospel, but didn't love others, it would be of no value whatsoever. <coughs> whatsoever. I tell you that's something. So you out here preaching and prophesying and speaking in tongues, mm. but you don't care nothing about people. People is just they are just a mean to an end. A means to an end. <laughs> It's just a way of getting money, getting uh, 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 name, fame, and finances. That's all. He says, it would be of no value. No value. No value whatsoever. So remember those people um, that were saying, Lord, didn't I? Lord, uh. didn't I? Lord, didn't I? I yeah. And he said, depart, depart from me. I never, knew, never you knew you because what you was doing had nothing to do with love. Oh, that's something. It had nothing to do mm. with love. See, mm. this right here is sobering. It's a game changer. You, yeah, it is a game changer. Mm. And the scriptures that you're coming with is going to back this up. Because mm. we want to believe, I love God. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? Right? I love God. I love you, sis. I love you, bro. I love you. I love you. But you won't do nothing for and, nobody. And John, John, uh, James, uh, uh, John says that you can, how you can say you love God, he'll love people. Ooh. And, and, uh, <laughs> so it's first John talks about you ain't never seen him, but you say you love him, but you don't love the people that you see every day who made an image of God. Mm. I'm going to tell y'all right now, straight up, up front, that I know I need God to help me with love because I have not got to the place where I have put God first in my life to the degree where my life is about loving people. You know, and and I, and I like to say this is because um, God will change you. Like God changes us. We feel a certain way because we hear other other people' opinion about people. Because this particular person would be on the TV talking about an advertisement, and every time I would hear his voice, it would just be like like somebody scratching on a chalkboard. I just mm. could not stand it. I would mm. mute it. I would mute. The, uh, the voice. I didn't want to hear that guy mm -hmm. because what he had done and what he had said. But lately, that broke. God broke that. And I could listen to him and say, that guy got a great product. He got, mm -hmm. a, he got a great product. 
even regardless, regardless of how I may feel about it, but he have a great product. Mm -hmm. And I started, mm -hmm. and, and in other words, it broke that. Mm -hmm. Because that, I didn't, I wasn't, I, I didn't love him. Mm -hmm. I cared nothing about him. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to go to jail, whatever. But that's, that's, but see, you may feel a certain way, but when you in God, God will change you Thank back you, you supposed to. Hallelujah. So don't lose hope. Don't think, oh, I don't. God will work on you to change you. Well, that, he's doing that with me. Amen. He is doing that with me. He's showing me how to genuinely love people. It's so much deeper than saying that I love. I mean, even my frustrations recently with some people in my life, my frustration, I felt so justified. I felt so uh, vindicated and so, you know. But then it was like, now let's flip this. What if you would have done this? Or what if you would have done that? Then you would have been showing more love in their life, whether they were showing love in yours or not. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, my God. So now I'm at that place where it doesn't matter what I'm getting from anybody. I need to still be able to show love to them. And it starts with that the young man that, had irked me so bad and that would call me and always want to cuss me out and be hostile towards me. And I know you guys hearing that and saying, okay, what you done done that this person is always cussing you out? This is just their way. I'm not the only one that cuss everybody out. <laughs> you know, this. I, I don't know if it's connected to a mental state or not or is it just being mean or this is just how they live their life and handle people. I don't know, but I didn't like it. Right. But now I have a better way of dealing with it. Now I can say, I can be friendly Overcome and jovial. Uh, good with yes, you. yes. And and sometimes that's all you need. You need somebody to tell you, hey, if somebody is doing something and it's bothering you, you know, just come out of yourself and be nice to them and be kind to them. But it doesn't mean that you got to go and hang out with them mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean? You got to be in their inner circle. But what it does mean, if they need you, you need to help them. If you have the ability to do it, you do it. But you don't do it out of yourself. You do it out of God. You do it as unto God, you know. You're mm -hmm. not doing it for you. You're doing it for the Lord. Now, you're going to talk about that reward. So, I'm going to finish this where we can get to that. Verse 4 says, love is very patient and kind. kind. Love, love is, patient, is and patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Oh, my God. That, that, that one right there. That, 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 see right there? Mm -hmm. Out of all this, that's the definition of the love that we supposed to have right there. Mm -hmm. That's the definition of it. Well, remember I was telling you, well, you knew it, but this is what I saw in the scriptures without having read this. This is what I saw. I was demanding my own way. And because I was demanding my own way, I wanted time, mm -hmm. attention, and, and resources. I was demanding my own way. And because I was demanding my own way, I created a situation that was not good. Mm -hmm. But had I just been loving and showing love, then things would have been way different. The uh, rest of the scripture says, it is not, love is not irritable or touchy. How many of us been mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. We thought we were justified. We thought we was okay. You know, you did this, you did that. You done got on my nerve. You done irritated me, bothered me. And so now we're seething and we're sitting there having wicked and evil thoughts about this person, right? He said that nothing about that is love. <laughs> nothing. It does not hold grudges. A grudge. Why? No. It, that means that you got to let go of whatever. Somebody did to you, you got to let it go. Mm. You cannot hold a grudge because now you're no longer in love. Lord, have mercy. Uh, grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. Mm, 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 mm. It is never glad about injustices, 
injustice, I'm sorry, but rejoices, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. So instead of when that guy killed George Floyd and then he was found guilty and going to prison and all that, instead of partying and everybody, yeah, you know, you rejoice that that truth wins out. Mm -hmm. Not, oh, he got heals. He deserved it. Because here's the thing. All of us have done something. Yeah. It may not have been worthy of federal it, prison yeah. for life or whatever, but we done done something. That's so right. when you start not wanting God to have mercy, hmm. that's going to hmm. backfire. Yeah, I want that. Because we, we definitely need mercy. We need mercy, even for the yeah. little things yeah, that we, we yeah, do. We that could, that should have our compassion. Yeah, because if that's the case, God should. Ooh. See, I'm telling you. Love is way deeper than saying I love you. Mm -hmm. You would do better not to say I love you and just show it. Absolutely. Yeah. You're not obligated to tell anybody I love you. Show them mm -hmm. that you love them. Be kind to them. Mm -hmm. Be kind to them. Be patient with them. I worry about, well, I have worried about growing older and wondering if my children are going to be there. Or are they going to be the kind of children that will be uh, uh, not patient with you, irritable with you? I've watched a lot of people with their parents and they're kind to their parents. And, you know, their parents may have Alzheimer's or dementia or something, but yet they're kind to them. Hallelujah. You know, that's the kind of stuff you think about. You don't want your parents to go into no kind of facility because those people are not obligated mm. to be kind. They're not obligated. You know, their job description probably don't tell them, you need to love these people. I like, uh, with me, as a nonprofit, I I do want people that love children. I don't want somebody to come and work with me. That, oh, yeah. That do not love children. That means that if that child has a need while you're facilitating and it's something that you can meet, that you're willing to do that. It doesn't mean you give that kid money, mm. you know, no. but you may have some resources that can help them, the, the, the parents out or mm. something like that. But some people will walk on. They'll go on about their business. Like, that's not my problem. You know, when you said that, mm -hmm. uh, it reminded me of, because it's a reflection of you. If they don't love kids and they're working for you, mm -hmm. they're a reflection of you. And well, we're a reflection of God. Ooh. Mm. So we have to reflect God's love to others because we are reflective. We are we light. I think that's what he's trying to get to us yeah. right there. That's why all the stuff you do don't matter if you don't love people. Because all that stuff, you might be doing that just for yourself. You might be doing that just to build a name for you. Mm. You might be doing that just to, uh, you know, have something to put on social media. Not because you love people. Something. Not because you, not because you care about people, right? Yeah. So if they didn't give you a dollar, would you still do it? And would you do it the same way? Would you <laughs> do it with all that ex enthusiasm mm -hmm. and joy? If they didn't give you anything, would you still do it, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm saying it's where mm -hmm. the rubber meets the road. Yeah. Mm. It's sobering. Yeah, it's, a, a, immediately when I started talking about this love thing, there was one lady that was irking me so bad. She was just asking for money constantly. She kept coming up with stuff, trying to just coming up with stuff to get money. And that lady had me so irritated and bothered. And, oh, I just felt some type of way. Hadn't heard from her in a while. Immediately when I started talking about love, who shows up and who asks me for something. See, I can't walk in that same thing that I was doing. Yeah, yeah. Lord, you got to show me what to do. Show me how to answer this. Show me how to address this. Because I want to show you regardless of whether or not it's a trick or, um, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. you know, it's underhanded or deceitful practice. Right, yeah. I still need to show you Jesus loved Judas. Yeah. He loved Judas. That was mind-blowing to me. He said friend. He called him when friend. It, when he 
bought the, the, the yeah, when he bought the those people in the arresting, he says, friend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You go. You gonna see the love of God, whether you want Him or not, whether you reject Him or not. You gonna see the love of God. You will not be able to stand before Him and say, "I didn't know." And that love that He was displayed to Judas caused Judas to go back and throw the money in the on the money back and say, "Hey, I betrayed Him. I, 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 I don't want this money." But He went out and hung Himself because that's what happens. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But. Uh, it didn't stop the Messiah from loving him, and things should not stop us from loving, mm-hmm. you know. Well, and and, and and the it's amazing that you said that because Judas' life demonstrated whether he loved or not. He did not love the Messiah. Right. Yeah. He did not. So your behavior will eventually tell the truth about yeah, you whether so. you love. And there's a recompense for not. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whether you love or not, so wow. That's something. Is that is like you know you know you know we don't have to sometimes judge people to be able to help them, and we do it out of love. The love of God in us. Then God has to deal with that person, and God will deal deal with that person. That person may lose a lot more than what they gain because. Instead of us just mm. doing our thing, he said, "Lord, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna help. I'm because I feel love. But if God know they're doing it wrong, they may lose their life. Something mm. may happen to them." Wow! Wow! I mean, it, this is where the rubber meets the road. This mm-hmm. is. I mean, this is what I say: the next level deep, that yeah. surface level. I love you stuff. <laughs> I mean, you can't see me shrugging my shoulders uh, to the listeners, but <laughs> woo. let me go ahead. It says, if you if you love someone, you will be loyal to him no matter what, no matter what the cost. You will always believe in him, always expect the best of him. Oh, see, this makes me think of that person. Expectation. Yeah, you know, that I, 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 my expectation is that they're always going to be rude, mean, and whatever. So I respond accordingly. But what if I start believing that God, you can change them. You can break that. You can. Yeah. Yeah. And so I start responding like I believe God can work in that situation. Mm. Mm. I'm seeing it as I'm saying yeah, it. Yeah. I'm seeing I it as I say it. Barriers. And always stand your ground in defending him. Uh, I think I'm going to stop right here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stop right there. Woo, cause, uh, and you know, and, and, wow. and, 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 we, and we know, if those who know the word, the chapter 12 talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And also we read here, in the first part of 13 talks about, you know, the gifts too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And But the last verse in, thir- in, in, in 12 Said that I show you a more excellent way than all these gifts, mm-hmm, all those mm-hmm. th- those nine gifts. Mm-hmm. The excellent way is love, mm-hmm. and it is. And then the end says the, 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 the greatest is faith, love, and hope. And the greater the three is love. Mm-hmm. Even faith, love is greater than faith because you can't please God unless you have a faith. But he said love is the greatest. Uh, verse 14, the very f- beginning of verse 14 says, let love be your greatest aim. <laughs> let love. So in this walk with God, not trying to figure out uh, what I was called to be or called to do, not trying to figure out, God, what you want. He said, let your greatest aim be love. So as a disciple and a follower of the mm. Lord Jesus Christ, our goal should be love. Mm-hmm. To love people, to demonstrate love. and I, Because if you're doing that, no doubt you're going to walk in what you were called to do. Yeah. No doubt you're going to uh, please God. It takes faith to walk in real love. It's, it takes faith to know that God, this go, this guy is cussing me out. This guy is saying this and saying that. It takes faith to know it's going to be okay being nice 
in spite of <laughs> someone being nice to you. Can we at least hit a couple of your scriptures before we go? <laughs> Man. Yeah. And that was uh, the one you told we, we, we talked a little bit last Matthew. night. Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter uh, uh, 5 and mm-hmm, verse mm-hmm. Uh, 43. And it goes over to talk down to 48. And it just says, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, this particular uh, version is the supernatural Bible. It's a Hebrew, Hebrew translation. Uh, Jesus says, you have heard of it has been said that you can love your love your neighbors mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and hate your enemy. That's mm-hmm. what he's. That's what it was saying in Leviticus. He said, "But I say to you, mm-hmm. love your enemies." Ooh, watch that word. Love your enemies. Okay, and bless those who what curse you, and do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Why? That you may be the sons of God, of your Father in heaven. Because you are of God, you, you base your love according of, of all these other people here and what they're doing to you. Mm-hmm. Because you are God's representative. You are part of God's family. And so therefore, you must look beyond what they are doing because you are sons of God. Say, so say, for God, He makes His Son to rise on the evil and on the good. And He sends rains on the just as well as the unjust. So, so if you love only those who love you, what reward have you? Say, if you only love you, you don't have the reward, but the reward comes by loving people who spite and curse you, your enemies. Your enemies, those who spitefully curse you and say oh, and, and persecute you and say all oh, manner against you, when you love them, there's a reward. Mm. If mm. you love those who love you, God said that there's no reward. There's that's you may get a, a warm feeling, but you're not gonna get a supernatural blessings. Okay? Because even he said, even the tax collectors love do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, the Christians only. What do you do, do more than these? Are those? Do not even the, the, the tax collectors do the same. Therefore, he said, therefore, all, love all. Therefore, be complete. Complete is loving all, even as your Father in heaven is complete. Our life is in Christ, uh, in God. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. as God, through God, we can do all that. Love. Yeah, you know what? And I thank God that that's what you ended on because, like, if someone was listening to this and they realized that I haven't been loving people, I haven't been doing that kind of love. I get irritated with people. I cut people off. You know, I I, I don't even want to be bothered with going over there, you know, doing this or doing that. And so they realize, as I have, that I haven't been biblically loving you avoid you, people. Can't, you see them coming, you go the other way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, not me, but... Oh, no, not you. I'm, 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 I'm just... You know, yeah, I was going to say, I ain't did no, that. No, 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 not you. you know, you're the people that, you know, like, oh, God, I'm... Uh, yeah, you don't, you don't want... Hey, there they come. Oh, man. Yeah, you, you know, that, because you can see the need coming. I get what you're saying. Yeah. So you want to go the other way because... Uh, you don't want to do whatever it is you need to do, or it made me. It, when you said that, I just had this. You know that person that you see them and they got that little dap and they walk, but every time they come up to you, they say, "Hey, let me hold some. Let me hold some. Break some off. Yeah, me. break break some off. You know, and you know they gonna ask you for something. So what you say? You go the other way <laughs> to avoid doing yeah, that. Boy, but, all of us have these little things that we do, but I think we need to graduate from. Um, just telling people we love them. Don't stop that. Do that, but back that up. Ask yourself, do your husband really know that you love him? Does your wife really know that you, that she loves you? Did I say that right? Does your children really know that you love them? Do your parents really know that you love mm-hmm. them.
Do the people really know? And you can't base that on, well, I tell them I love them all the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that is so Western. That is so American. That is so us and what we do. We got this thing in our head. One of the last words to my mama was, I loved her before she died. Okay, but if you didn't take care of her and do good to her and honor her, your last words, what the Lord say, that don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's meaningless. If you say, I love you every day, so that'll be your last words to people. <laughs> but you don't do nothing to help them. You don't do nothing to provide for them. Yeah. I, I was at a youth summit, and I was videotaping. I was videotaping the lady that was speaking, and she was the lady was spitting out some real good stuff. I, I, I sensed that she was a believer. I just didn't know for sure, but no doubt she was a, she was a believer. And I was picking up on the anointing that was on the words, even though she wasn't preaching from the Bible. But um, I was, and a young man walked up to me and he said, "Ma'am," he said, "I was trying to record." He said, "But my phone cut off." He said, "Will you send me the video?" And I said, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. He had no proof that I was going to do that. That man didn't know me from Adam. Mm -hmm. Right? So I was standing there because I was going to take a picture with the speaker and everything. Because she does what I do. And I love it. I was so stirred up in my spirit by what she was doing. Because, you know, that's what's in my heart to do. And the guy looked at me. And he said, I said, uh. I, I looked at him and I said, uh, I'm doing the video now. <clears throat> you know, and the guy was like, uh, he wanted to express his gratitude so much that he grabbed three books. Books that are for sale. He gave, grabbed three books and gave me the three books to say, I appreciate you. I appreciate. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He didn't have to do that. But in that moment, I felt acknowledged. I felt all kinds of emotions. <laughs> he didn't have to do that. Amen. But he did. It was nothing for me to send that video. So what if we leave everybody like that? What if we leave everybody feeling uh, appreciated oh, hey. and, and loved That's and That's objective kind? there. That's something we should be doing. You know. To have an impact the love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to end with this one. And this is what I told uh, Apostle Tina uh, Robinson. Mm -hmm. If you invite somebody out to eat, oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> if you invite somebody out to eat, um, pay for their food, mm -hmm. right? Now, oh, yes, if yeah, you yeah. cannot pay for their food, invite them, ask them if you, they would like to maybe get together one day and go out to eat together. Frame it in a different way. But if you invite them out to eat, yeah, pay for their food, right? They're probably going to say, you don't have to do that. It's okay, right? But that was an opportunity right there for you to say, I appreciate you. Um, uh, you know, I'm grateful for you. <laughs> I'm thankful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the little things. See, those are the things that People will remember. Can I see that again? So, Overseer just showed me that, um, hey, God bless you, Tasha. Good morning. Good to uh, see you today. Let me just share some of the things that uh, Tasha was saying. She said the action and the consistency speaks louder than the verbal statement. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. She said that's powerful. Love is a service. Yes. Right? And see, that's how we that's how we need to serve God. Our mission and our aim is love. It's not to be known. It's not to work out this gift that's in me. The greatest gift that's no. in you that you should be working out is love. Because he's already told us. All this stuff you out here doing, if you're not doing it because you love people,
people mm. and you want to be able to love on people, what you doing is meaningless. Yes. Even though it look like I'm doing this for the Lord. And God gave me this to do and all of that. Ask yourself, why am I mm. doing this? Why am I really doing this because I love you? That's something, something yeah. You know, I, I, I'm not going to toot my own horn or mm. nothing because I can't. But I've had people say, you know, I ain't going to do that because my husband grown. He can go in there and fix himself some. Well, I will go in and cook and make your plate. And a lot of times bring your plate to you. But I'm heavy handed with food. So sometimes I have to pull back and let you, you know, decide what you want on your plate. Because I can be kind of heavy handed. <laughs> and you are one of those people that will eat everything. But I get my satisfaction out of that is almost like kind of that's a way of providing for you or doing a service mm -hmm. For you, and I don't expect anything in return. It's just that I don't get to do a whole lot for you, but that's one thing mm -hmm. that I get Amen. to do. Well, that mm -hmm. you know, and so it's like doing for people. It may not cost you as much time and attention and effort and money that you think, because most people are moved by the little small things oh, that yeah. you do. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. The little small things that you do. So I guess we're going to get ready to uh, close out today. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening live on Live 365 for more radio. Again, we are 24 hours for those of you that are listening um, uh, on demand through Spreaker. Listen, you can not only listen to um, the podcast, but we also have a radio station where you can hear music and you can hear some of the podcasts on demand, not just mine, but other podcasts on demand, uh, tw music 24 hours. You can also suggest um, songs that you might like to hear because I'm always look looking for new music. If you do have something you'd like to share, all you got to do is hit me up on Facebook Messenger, uh, Dr. Lori Amore. And, uh, you know, just share with me what you would like to um, hear. Or you can drop a word through Instagram, uh, the radio personality. And, uh, you know, just share any kind of music mm -hmm. you would like to hear. But, yes, yeah, so for those of you that are listening in other countries, that are listening on Spreaker, check us out. It is for a more radio on Live 365. Uh the link is on my Facebook page, Dr. Lori Moore. It's one click. Boom. You click on the logo and you are in the station, right? Ooh. You can get all of that, all of that. So, but I'm going to take time out to tell you guys, thank you for listening. You don't have to do that. I appreciate that. And I'm grateful to God. And the most I can do for the listeners at this point in life is I can just pray for you because I don't know you. So we just pray that God bless mm -hmm. all of you that take time out to listen or click on our logo for that station. So we want to thank you and give God glory for you. Overseer, is there anything you would like to say? I enjoy talking with you, enjoying uh, being here with you. And... Uh, Praise God. I, but I tell you one thing, love is, uh, that's it. You're going to definitely be on, uh, be aware of that. Be aware of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I, I'm moving away from our shallowness of love <laughs> and getting into that uh, deep love. It ain't even deep love. It's just love. Love is love. Love is like love. Like they would say, love is what love does. Amen. <laughs> All right, guys. So for those of you that are listening on Live 365, we appreciate you. And, um, Thank you for listening live. Again, you will be able to hear this broadcast later on demand for um, on Spreaker, but it'll be on uh, Live 365 again later. So thank you so much for that, and God bless you. We love you. Live 365, we're out. Hallelujah. 
All right. So, and for those of you that are on Spreaker, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Tasha. God bless you. We love you. And for those of you that are listening, silent listeners on today, I always find out I have silent listeners because they'll repeat back to me something that I said. And I was <laughs> like, oh, okay. So you were listening. Thank you for that. I appreciate all of you. And to those of you that uh, do listen later on and let me know, I appreciate you all. appreciate you. Okay, guys. So I'm going to get out of here with just a tad bit of the breakthrough song. And uh, then we're gone. That's it. In my life, I shall see what the Lord has in store for me. And I declare, I decree, my result is victory. In my life, I shall see what the Lord has in store for me. And I declare, and I decree, my result is victory.